Hey guys, so welcome back to Let's Reads. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss my top, um, well, my top five male authors. Now, the crazy thing is when I was coming up with this list, I realized that I do not read a lot of male authors. I tend to gravitate towards, you know, women authors. And after coming up with this list, I'm like, I have to, I need to add more, you know, <laughs> males on my list. Uh, but I do want to share with you guys the top five. Um, these are authors um, that when I do read males, I tend to pick up their, you know, their work. So, yeah. So the first um, one is Ernest J. Gaines. Now, last year, um, he was a part of my three author project where I focus on three authors and I focus on a whole fictional catalog. And I pick Ernest J. Gaines last year and I really did enjoy his works. His works are, um, he focuses on black men when it comes to injustice, hardships, it usually deals with, um, you know, incarceration and just the wrongdoings when it comes to being, you know, a black male in America and especially a black male in the South. Um, primarily he writes um, in Louisiana. And when I tell you, when you're reading his works, he gets in that the mindset of those male characters and you just feel every bit of pain you know when you're reading and it, it's it's really hard but i still i appreciated that when i read Ernest Shea Gaines book um he just he got me where i needed to be the second is Richard Wright now i've only read two books by Richard Wright um Native Son, this one, and Black Boy. He kind of has the same kind of concept as Ernest J. Gaines. Um, you know, it deals with obviously, you know, Black men in America. And I know in particular this book, Native Son, it was really hard for me to read, um, especially um, it's a particular scene where Bigger is the main character. He um, accidentally kills a white girl and the way that he deposits the body, it's it's real brutal so um it was hard but again it's one of those that are necessary also too his writing is just impeccable um my aunt had an aunt that worked in um academics she was a english teacher for over 40 years and she always said if you want to write detailed sentences if you want to know how to write well um pick up a Richard Wright book and literally copy his sentences and try to emulate how he is writing. And that really did help when I was in, you know, college because he just knows how to write. Um, I, it's, it's so, it's, it's like hard to describe it, but if you read his writing, you see it. He writes in such detail, but not being over detailed. Um, and then he's, he's a, he's just a fantastic storyteller. The second is James Baldwin. Now, in 2020, I read um, all of James Baldwin's fictional catalog. I think when people think of James Baldwin, they think of his um, nonfiction. And that is amazing, too. I love Fire Next Time. Um, but I tend to like his fiction more. I think maybe because I just like fiction. But he's a fantastic storyteller. And I like James because in all his uh, novels and um, and his um Nonfiction. he talks about the church um he grew up in the church now one thing i do have a problem with is he tends to put everything on the church but it's you know i always say people that are people that go to church are not of the church some people are just church goers and i think sometimes he can kind of generalize and just blame everything you know on the church and it's like you gotta you know it's the people but uh james it's the people but it doesn't take the fact that this man knows how to write and for me i always feel like when i read james baldwin he, i feel like such an intellect because james was just brilliant he was ahead of his time if you notice back in 2020 there was a resurgence of baldwin and i think it's because like i said he was ahead of his time if you read you know the fire next time he it's a a letter to his nephew talking about how to navigate as a black man in America, what to do, what not to do. And everything that he talks about in his novels and in his nonfiction, it's like it was written today. That's how scary it is. And I think also too, it just shows you that we haven't really made a, a huge progress as we think. Um, but 
like I said before, I love his uh, fiction um, books. My favorite is The Ant-Man Corner. This is a play. Um, and this gets me because of, uh, when you think of like ministers um, and preachers, you think of them being men. This one, the main protagonist, she is a woman. And she has a husband that has um, come back in her life. Um, he is like an estranged husband. So he's he's like a secular man. And her congregation is afraid that, you know, with having this man back in her life, that she's just gonna go down you know the wrong path uh but it was just I, the way he wrote this the dialogue just got me and then my favorite um i would say because this is a play my favorite novel of his is another country i love the main um one of the main characters ida um just I, I just love Ida. Ida has a special place in my heart if you've read this book you know how Ida is she's witty she's sassy she's gonna tell you like it is so yeah my next is um Eric Jerome Dickey I love Eric Jerome Dickey I was so sad when he passed because his work is just beyond brilliant I I, I like that dialogue that he has um also too I would say he does write um women characters he makes them he makes us real dramatic but i still like them because for me i think sometimes too when it comes to um male authors i don't like the way they sometimes write women and especially black women it's like oh my goodness but he he can do it for me him and then the other author that i'm gonna tell you about um my last one is another one but i love james this is probably not james excuse me um uh eric jerome dickey i would say milk and my coffee is my favorite um because if you read it you're thinking that this black man is falling you know in love with this white woman but when you really get into it you see like oh okay that's what <laughs> that's what that book made me do when i read this it was that oh okay um and then there's my other favorite one i like uh genevieve this one got me too because with his books um you think that you know what's going on and then he'll like throw a curveball at you and it's like oh i wasn't expecting that a beauty of a great writer love Eric jerome dickey so yeah and my last one is elin harris now elin harris oh my goodness um i read him i want to say back in 2020 for the first time and he's another one like i said with james where I don't mind if he um, writes uh, a woman protagonist because for some reason he just knows how to, and especially, you know, um, black women. And this, this series. series is actually called Invisible Life, but there's three books. Um, and it just deals with a man that, uh, his, his, I think his name is Raymond. He's dealing with his sexuality. A lot of his books, Elin Harris, he talks about um, uh, sexuality and homosexuality, gender roles um and he really was a pioneer in his own because in one of the books he actually um talked about um like a transgender character and that book was that and in that book i think that was published in like the 90s and that was kind of like not really talked about that much so for him to bring that up he was a real pioneer and i i just love all of his books and i really love this invisible life series um elan harris can do no wrong so yeah so guys, that's all I have for my top five, um, I keep on dropping these books, <laughs> my top five uh, black male authors. Again, I'm going to try to read more when it comes to black male authors because I need to. Um, like I said before, coming up with this list, I was like, yeah, Alexis, you need to read more when it comes to mail. So that's all I have for you guys. and I will see you later. Bye.